Well, last time around we took a look at fractions and their equivalents just really quickly. Um, now we want to take a look at simplifying fractions. So we are still working through 8.1a and 8.1b this time around. 8.1a tells us that we want to compare and order rational numbers in various forms. And 8.1b say we want to select and use appropriate forms of rational numbers to solve real life problems. So simplify and let's just go ahead and call simplifying fractions. Okay. Let's jump right in and see what we've come out with. Uh, vocabulary wise, we've said that a fraction is a number. So let's say it's a number. So we want to talk about a fraction. Let's go ahead and put it down. Fraction is a number. And the number is written in the form. in the form mm, that did not come out right but it's a good smart board I was wondering when that was going to happen transform it to a traditional smart board and that's what a smart board do when it touches more than what you're writing with hmm. so it's in the form of a over B okay and we have to understand here B can not equal zero. Okay, so that's what a, fr a fraction is. Where you we look at a is called a denominator, and I'm using variables here instead of actual numbers. But a is the numerator actually, and b is your denominator okay that's pretty much what the definition is so now we want to make sure that we know that what we're doing here with these fractions we want to simplify them um, in the simplest form and what we're saying when we say simplest form We're talking about that the numerator and the denominator uh, have one as their greatest common factor. So we're saying that the numerator and denominator. numerator and the denominator have one that means nothing else can divide into those two fractions with the exception of one uh, has one as their greatest common factor and this is also known as G C F so you'll see this is time and they will use the uh, acronyms instead of spelling it out okay so we said equivalent fractions represent the same we just talked about that uh, and uh, they have the same simplest form so we put up uh, four eighths and if we put up four eighths or if we put up or eight over sixteen or sixteen over thirty two they all are equivalent fraction but they have the same simplest form which is one half okay 
So we want to make sure that you're clear on what we're talking about here, that they have the same simplest form, uh, which is one half. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to write, use an example, and we want to write uh, a fraction in its simplest form. So we'll do that right now. And, and just listen closely. Um, we'll, let's just say we are, we're at J.C. Penney's. And J.C. Penney's has probably a good sale of shoes. So they have a real nice shoe sale. As a matter of fact, J.C. Penney's has, let's say, they have, mm, let's take a just say, say they have 200. 200 pair of shoes okay let me clean it up so they have 200 pair of shoes and out of that 200 pair of shoes they're going to put well, 50 of those shoes on sale. So out of 200, 50 pair will go on sale. So the first thing we want to do when we're dealing with this is we want to write this uh, in a fraction format as a rational number. So to do so, 20, 200 pair will be our denominator and 50 would be our our uh, numerator. So we what we're sure to do here is find our greatest common factor of 50 and uh, well, let's say 50 and 200. So we're looking for the GCF, the greatest common factor. Well, we can first uh, begin by finding the factors of 50. So let's go ahead and work at the factors of 50. Okay, so our factors of 50 is, of course, uh, 50 times 1. Well, let's let's go ahead and and go with 25. So we have 2 times 25 and then we know that 25 can be broken down as 5 times 5. So we can say that our factors of 50 would be 2 times, and I'm just going to do it this way for you because I have a reason. 2 times 5 times 5. Okay? So now we need to also look at, well, what are the factors of 200? And I'm going to put this above the top here so we don't, we actually don't run into any, any discrepancies. So we look at 200. Okay? So what, how do we factor 200? So we know that 200 has with it 2 times 100 and of course 100 carries with it uh, 2 times 50 and 50 carries with it 2 times 25 and 25 carries with it 5 times 5 well if I go and look at what I have for my 50, I have 2 times 5 times 5. Okay? And I look at my 100, I have literally 2 to the third power, actually, times 5 times 5. Okay? Which is uh, 25. So what I'm looking at is 2 times 2 times 2 times 
5 times 5. So if we wanted to literally simplify it, we would look at numbers here. So here we would take away a 2, take away a 2, take away a 5, take away a 5, and then take away another 5, and take away another 5. And as we can see, if we did the math, 5 times 5 is 25 times 2 will equal 50. And did the same thing here, we would see we will get 50. So that is telling me that my greatest common factor out of these two numbers is 50. So we can go and divide both sides by 50. And we will get 1 over 4. So to simplify 50 over 200, and we'll show you a different way. This is just one method to, sh to show you how to factor and find the greatest common factor. We did so by first finding what the two have in common, what factor that they have in common, and we found out it was 50. And we can divide both numerator and denominator by 50. And that will give us a simplified one-fourth. Now, it says that the denominator and numerator can have only one factor in common, which is 1. So let's look at 1 and 4. The only thing that can divide in both 1 and 4 is 1. So, simplifying fraction, we will spend a lot of time going over this because it is very, very crucial that we know how to do this as we go forward. If you have any questions, please put those in the comment section.